All right, boys, welcome back to Midnight Cigars. My name is Eric, and today we will be reviewing EP Carrillo, Honduras. So yeah, this is supposed to be like a budget line for EP Carrillo. I think they're all the same price as the other one as well. They have the Sumatra, the Maduro, and the Honduras. These are the budget line, I would say. Like, you know, the budget smoke. All of them stay the same price range. Which they should because they're in the same size. For each size, the same price. So, I mean, for like, if it's a Toro, all the Toro is the same price. They, you know, they should be the same price. I don't know why people are talking about that. Tell the truth, right? Basically the same line, but different wrapper and same size. Should be the same price. That's just me. But yeah, uh, a lot of my friends say there's a lot of squishiness to them, like underfuel. But this one, this one feels, I mean, there's a few soft spots, but it's not like squishy, squishy. You know what I mean? It's not squishy, squishy. But why don't we take a closer look at it? All right, here's the cigar. EP Carrillo Honduras. There's a foot band. The wrapper looked dark for Honduras, tell the truth. Carrillo, Carrillo. But yeah, the band looks simple. You know, the blue is kind of catching with the red. But yeah, it's, the bands are kind of catching, but it's not like, you know, crazy looking nice beautiful looking band or anything but it's, it's alright so MSRP $10 size 6x52 uh, the wrapper is Honduras bind is Honduras filler is Honduras Nicaragua so even though it's Honduras mostly Honduras you know I thought there would be a Piro but it's not and it's manufactured in Pacencia cigars okay so Placencia make this? I don't know. Not sure. Don't quote. But yeah. The cigar look good. A uh, few soft spot, but it's not squishy. It's not underfield for me. There's a few of my friends that smoke this and it's very underfield. But we see. Good looking foot as well. Good packed. Good looking cap. Alright, now let's cut it and light it. Alright. Oh, I didn't know. There was a QR code around the foot band. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Take it off. No rum on the wrapper. Nothing much on the foot either. Okay. Let's see how the cold draw is. Nice clean cut, cold draw. Good draw. Really nothing much on the cold draw either. All right. There's really nothing, not much aroma coming from the cigar at all. All right, let's light it. They have the Honduras sweetness. Sweet woodsy. And the Honduras. It does linger on the finish. That sweet woodsiness.
a little bit of spiciness. Like, I would say it's just spice, like all spice, baking spice kind of. It finished with the Honduras sweetness, so sweet wood. A little molasses, dark molasses. That's it though. And the rest is pretty plain. It's just plain of anything. Of nothing, I mean. Nothing really much going on except for those notes. The link, the finish is very long. It's quite long. It's still there. It's like, they have a dark woodsy sweet tone, like a dark espresso mixed with a little bit of like cream coffee in it. It's like a sweet dark chocolate. They have that kind of finish, I would say, or that kind of flavor. But other than that, it go very plain mode. It just, eh, you know, the, it's, it, the flavor die out pretty quickly. That's it for the few puff. We'll see what happened at the end of the first third. All right, boys, welcome back with the end of the first third. Really nothing have changed since the light up. Woodsy, dark chocolate sweetness, like really dark chocolate. And the finish as well, the retro hell. Retro House is kind of good, tell the truth. It have a daintiness, sweetness, molasses, kind of like sweet molasses, in my opinion. It's really good. I really like that. That's very interesting. A little bit wussy in the talent. But the daintiness that combined with all of that go pretty well together. You know what I mean? I like that Retro House. The Retro House is good. The palette. The same thing, pretty consistent of the light up. Nothing much have changed. I hope something changed on the palette, but if the retro hell keep it like that, I prefer that. That's good because I retro hell a lot. And the palette is whatever, right? If I could get the good retro hell, it'd be a plus. But we we'll see what happened at the end of the second third. All right, boys, with the end of the second third, as you can see, the ash is very nice. Hold well, burn line, no problem. Construction, not a problem, tell the truth. But nothing changed. Consistency of the cigar, it reverted back to the light up. A uh, nice, sweet, wussy, very plain finish with a little bit of like sweet molasses. The retro hell, it's nice with the dankiness, it keep it like that, but I kind of have a better tail end right now, which is not pleasant in my opinion, my palate. You have a better tail end. Don't like that. Maduro. But yeah, um, the better tail end on the retro hell, not on the palate, just on the retro hell, not my liking. Take off the band, here's the band. You know, interesting colorful looking, I like the blue. But I think it's transitioning right now as we speak. It's getting a more dark, dark wood tone finish. Dark wood tone finish. On the palette, it still has the bitterness on the tail end of the retro hell though. So I don't know. It might go better. It, if the bitterness go away, it could be something nice, I would say. It's not too bad. But it's consistent. You know what I mean? But sometimes it does 
some puff does really just bleh, just blank sometimes here and there, like a blind spot I would say. But then after that puff, it comes right back. So I don't know. It's like it's consistent, but it's not at the same time. When the flavor come back, it's the same note, I would say. But that's only one puff, so it doesn't really matter. You know, many of you take another puff, you're fine. Get back at it. But um, why don't we take a closer? I mean, not take closer. What the hell am I say? Uh, I see you guys at the end of the cigar. All right, boys, we're back at the end of the cigar. Tell the truth. Right after I get, I, I leave for the smoke section for this third. The flavor died. <laughs> Very bland bitterness though. It have a lot of tobacco bitterness on the final third. On the beginning of the final third all the way to now. And really nothing else. It dropped flat. It just dropped dead. Nothing to be raving about. Uh, bitterness on the retro hell with a little bit of spice. Uh, and then blank. Uh, and <clears throat> on the palate, bitterness with a little bit of woodsy, a little bit of everything. And not, not like everything, but a little bit of like woods and just bitterness that just come out of the cigar. I don't want to smoke this anymore. But um, yeah, it, it totally just died. It just flat out nothing at the beginning of the final third. It's fucking nuts. So the way I would rate this cigar, it, the final third is so bad that it just the score just goes, go, you know what I mean? So I would rate it, I give it a three. Because I did kind of like the first and second third, you know, it wasn't too bad. Until the final third, it just died out. <coughs> I have no idea what happened to it. But yeah, 3 out of 10, uh, the way I rate my cigar is 1 to 6.9 is a no-go, 7 to 7.9 is a rebuy or 5 pack, 8 and above is a box worthy. And this one is a straight no-go, not again. Um, that's it for the review. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and comment. I'll see you next time. And tell me what you guys think about this cigar if you guys smoked already. Alright, that'd be it. Peace!